TPA stands for thermal polyaspartate. Okay, now it's, it's a long chain polymer, is what it is. It's a manufactured long chain polymer. Uh, basically, it's patented. We've got 43 patents on it. It's a synthetic protein derived from amino aspartic acid. Now, 10 years ago, when Monsanto used to make NutraSweet, they manufactured aspartic acid. Okay, what we do is take aspartic acid and cook it. That's why we call it thermal. Okay, what we do is run it through big rotating ovens and, and cook it. And it depends on how long we cook it, it, it determines the molecular size. Uh, like like Jason said earlier, we got everything patented from 1,000 to 100,000. Everything in the ag market has been 5,000 molecules. Basically, you got to remember that it's a large nuclear charged molecule, has a high CEC, 750, but it's not high enough that the plant still can't pull away from the positives it attaches to. So remember the Clox group, which is like a folic acid or humic acid, same, same group of amino acids. And the real key there is the molecular weight is 5,000. You know, so Clemson did the carbon-14 test. It doesn't go into the plant through the root stems or leaves. Therefore, it's not a, it's not a plant growth regulator. Okay, but once we put it in with a fertilizer in the soil or in a foliar product, it doesn't go into the plant. Therefore, we was exempt from a lot of the EPA regulations and, and that kind of stuff. But what happens on this one is, you know, a calcium chloride ammonium sulfate. What happens on this, the calcium immediately finds, the positive calcium immediately finds the negative SO4 in the form of gypsum, calcium sulfate. Right? In this one, because it's still clear, what happens when you put the TPA in there, it attaches to the positive calcium and leaves the SO4 available. See, so it keeps those separated. 